Okay, good morning. Wednesday, 16th of May. Hope you are well. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things, the moves from yesterday. Uh, I think one important thing to keep in mind, although we did have a, a lower finish on Wall Street, it's kind of fed through uh, sentiment-wise to Asia. Don't forget the Dow was on an eight-day winning streak. Um, so we'll look at some of the reasons behind what's broken that, that consecutive positive run. Uh, the yields, the move in the currencies in dollar yen. Um, there's some updates and other things such as Italy, North Korea. Uh, so I'm going to talk about those kind of news items in a bit more detail. And then I'll hand you over to Sam and he'll, he'll talk through uh, the markets more technically and some of the setups he's looking at for today. But uh, obviously one of the most evident things from yesterday was the kind of simultaneous break of key levels across different assets. And the US retail sales report yesterday very much seemed to act um, not so much as the data in itself, but as a catalyst around those timings to trip then those subsequent levels, which I think was very important. Uh, and just having a quick look at what these key levels were and going through them uh, with the dollar first. Uh, this is an image here you can see in, in the top, the dollar index. Uh, the, the Dixie is trading just off those highs at the moment in terms of this morning. Uh, but we are above 93 still and as you can see here you know this is kind of going back to the beginning of the year essentially so any of that dollar weakness that was very much a, a prevalent theme at the beginning of the year uh, has very much been dispelled if you like and we are up here uh, at levels not seen for several months with firmer dollar you've also got yields and i actually think this is probably the bigger story than a lot of the other things that are ongoing at the moment and we're going to get on to North Korea in a second. I think that's kind of secondary if you like. Uh, if you look at the actual local assets, the Korean KOSPI, their local stock index actually was it's kind of brushed aside some of these North Korean comments from overnight. I think the broader macro theme is being driven uh, predominantly by the yields and we've seen US 10-year yield go back to its highest level since 2011. So you can see this peak where we got to at this 3.05 people were looking at just shortly after the US retail sales which got tripped and that led to uh, kind of a further push so notes were under pressure this kind of higher yield mentality meant equities is under pressure kind of belief then of multiple rate hikes still to come from the Fed this year uh, dollar appreciated and that weighed quite heavily on both major FX pairs at the time uh, but as you can see here that technically a really big level having been taken out puts us all the way back to this far left hand side to the highest yield level in the US 10 year um, for what seven years the two year in fact the highest now in 10 years uh, so even further back uh, a few other things though to be aware of that were happening at the same time and this is when you know we've talked about the dollar we've talked about yields how about gold you can see we had that really pronounced movement where we kind of got down we flirted with that 1300 it bounced and the subsequent break it really took a bit of momentum to the downside and really drifted all the way lower uh, throughout the kind of rest of the European session at least and this is kind of what we had marked up from yesterday and 1300 really has been uh, a psychological level for gold for some time and you can see here these are uh, year-to-date lows I know some of you managed to get hold of that on the break uh, and you can see uh, uh, points of resistance at around these levels that we've had towards the end of last year, which had held uh, and just drawing uh, some attention, having broken that cons kind of consolidation that we had between 13 to 1365 uh, since the commencement of 2018. So gold also broke that level, uh, which was also important and helped just the kind of overall asset movement yesterday afternoon. Uh, and then I'm just looking at the Japanese yen here. Uh, you can't really see much here from looking at a short time frame, but if I put this on a daily continuation chart, that 110, kind of the same deal with the 1300 psychologically in these, these instruments, these kind of major key levels. Uh, and that 110 having been a point of support uh, back at the beginning of the year and resistance uh, in February. You've also got here... I know Sam was looking at this in the chat this morning. This, that blue line there is the 200 DMA, which you can see is pretty much right on where we are, where we are at the moment. Uh, and of course, we managed to break that 110. So quite interested to see how we perform at around this point. We'll see if we're just looking here uh, at 
109.77 here you've got that double top now from what would be the early May and the high from last week uh, so quite interested to see now if this is going to act as a floor kind of a support uh, it, now that we're back below this 110 uh, I'd say 10977 is going to be quite interesting to see how it reacts around those levels. So, yeah, it's kind of a, a, a bit of a tricky one because it was more, I'd say, a broad based um, kind of move that was initiated via technical breaches uh, that happened at the same time with Catalyst being the retail sales. I don't think the retail sales report was particularly significant. I don't think that in itself was going to change Fed thinking, uh, even though it was a little bit weaker. It was important that the upward revisions uh, were much more steeper than the actual miss on the actual month's data. And that kind of outweighed it. That with the stronger empire kind of initiated that initial dollar move. And once those levels broke, the market kind of went on its way. Um, a few other things, though, that I quickly want to talk about uh, from a news perspective. And just moving on. It seems like trade talks have come back to the forefront a little bit. It's kind of had almost fallen away, this kind of China-US battle that was going on, the steel tariffs. It seems to have re-emerged a little bit. And I think this might add to a little bit of uh, negativity and sentiment if it does develop and increase in intensity. Uh, this is what was happening yesterday, where the EU uh, is said to have paid uh, Airbus, which is the French airline firm or, or aircraft maker, billions in illegal subsidies. So the WTO has ruled that the EU failed to comply with requests to end subsidies for the company. And the US trade representatives have said the ruling uh, in the dispute opens the way for placing tariffs on EU goods. Uh, so you're now talking about potential uh, ramifications that the US are going to look to impose on Europe, China are also being vocal about what they want done because of these rules being broken uh, in reference to Europe as well and it's kind of this type of situation kind of brings back slightly to the forefront this um, fragility if you like of market sentiment around what tit for tat uh, tariff wars could materialise into so I think this is definitely something worth watching uh, in that respect uh, net net as we've discussed many weeks before this kind of situation is kind of negative for all parties involved if it ends in retaliation kind of activity another thing that's happening um, this morning is there's a little bit of focus on Italy uh, Italian bond market having a bit of a wobble this morning uh, reports coalition could seek debt relief is what's happening here uh, let me just bring up a different page here this is what people are looking at, is this story which came out um, in the Huffington Post, Italia, last night. And basically they've obtained a 39-page document. And although it's dated, it is spooking a few people because it's talking about calling for a renegotiation renegot of Italy's European Union budget contributions. They've also, the anti-establishment Five Star and Far Right League plan to ask the ECB, apparently, to forgive 250 billion euros of Italian debt. Imagine that. You know, hey guys, do you mind, uh, do you mind just scrubbing 250 billion euros uh, just to help us out? That'd be really nice. Uh, this is why I think people a little bit, you know, the, the actual policies of this potential coalition in Italy is pretty far reaching in some of the requests that they're, they're looking to. Um, so far this morning, though, you've already had a league uh, economics spokesman who's come out and said the request for cancellation of 250 billion euros of debt was never in the official draft of the government program. So it's already been denied by some of these political parties. But certainly uh, the FTSE MIB this morning feeling a little bit of the brunt of maybe some renewed uncertainty. You know, things like this are seen the. Uh, Italian government bonds dip as 10-year yields are now above 2%. Um, you know, this type of thing was not priced in as of yesterday. This is new. Uh, and so it has just raised a few eyebrows this morning. Hasn't fed through, though, into a major ramification across broader markets, isolated to Italy for the moment, but worth monitoring. Um, other things that we've got, Brexit, just a quick mention. Um, you've got UK promising Brexit clarity in time for the EU summit in June. 
So we were awaiting, obviously, this cabinet meeting on the customs union yesterday with Theresa May. Nothing really came of that in terms of the broader news wires. Apparently, what's happening now is Theresa May is pushing for a detailed plan to be unveiled uh, in June, so in the coming weeks. So it kind of alleviates any near-term pressure for something for her to deliver right now. However, I also saw this morning a tweet just came out a few moments ago, a UK Cabinet Office Minister saying that we are not asking for a longer transition period after Brexit. This is on uh, the BBC. Now, obviously, this is completely counter to what was reported in the independent newspaper at the weekend and Bloomberg sources uh, yesterday, which had both respectively European and British uh, undisclosed individuals commenting that they were looking at a potentially a six-month extension on the transitional deal. This is being kind of denied so far this morning. So again, is this going to be, is this something to influence and in, in really uh, trade, so to speak, the news this morning on this type of story? I think not. And actually, I think if you're looking for a, a customs union deal, I think the line's been set now and Theresa May last night suggesting then that really she's going to unveil a more detailed plan next month. I think this kind of delays it a little bit. And so I wouldn't be expecting too much Brexit breaking news to be to be moving the pound for the moment the one thing i'm probably more interested in for the currency markets is going to be any potential repeat of yesterday which means i'm watching the dollar more than i'm looking at the fundamentals for the euro uh, and the pound the only thing would be obviously if we had a complete breakdown in italian politics then certainly that might get a bit of a ramification for the euro but for the moment i'm more focused dollar than i am anything else uh, in that respect Okay, a few other things, just North Korea, finally, to, to wrap things up uh, and just give you a bit of a, uh, a summary. So it didn't last long, it seems. The, 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 the two naughty schoolboys playing nicely together in the playground has lasted just a couple of weeks and it's getting potentially a bit um, tenuous once again in, with... Obviously, a couple of comments from Bolton, the, the more hawkish on foreign policy, a uh, new administrative official uh, on the uh, Secretary of State position. And, and basically, in summary, what's happened is this comment here. This came out of the North Korean vice foreign minister overnight, said that if they try to corner us, i.e. the US, and pressure us unilaterally to give up nuclear weapons, we will no longer be interested in such dialogue. We will have to reconsider whether to participate in the upcoming North Korea and US talks. And so basically the US has tried to kind of up the ante, make it more forceful and a quicker turnaround about the dismantling of their, their kind of nuclear ambitions. Um, but this isn't what the original discussions were. And as such then, uh, Korea is kind of trying potentially to break up talks, which were obviously set to go ahead in the coming weeks. The other thing that's happening uh, I understand is that at the moment both the US and South Korea are conducting military drills in the in the Korean Peninsula which obviously if you've just struck a peace deal between North and South Korea then why the hell are you operating uh, military exercises you know this is something typically done to flex your muscles in order to scare your opposition and so North Korea just maybe getting their back up a little bit over some of these latest developments I would say this is as a as I covered before, a secondary factor in my mind at the moment, unless this substantially escalates again, which I don't think it's at at this point. And I think at the moment, the focus is still a little bit on this, this yield story, the, these movements at these key levels and these assets that we've already discussed this morning. Finally, crude oil infantries, they came out last night. So let me just show you the oil price reaction first before we look at the numbers, then I'll hand you over to Sam. Uh, I've, Highlighted here with a circle, we had a little bit of downward movement last night on the release of the API data, but net-net, we've really gone nowhere, to be honest. Um, we're still holding a $71 handle, kind of in a bit of consolidation uh, at the moment, just below the, the pivot level. The actual numbers were a little bit bearish. As I said, the moves failed to be sustained because I think markets generally at this present point have been looking beyond the supply kind of infantry situation um, even, even with US output um, operational rigs from Baker Hughes on Friday showed another increase of, of 10 
uh, which I think puts us back up to something like the highest in since 2015, March 2015, I think. So US output is still going up and up and up, and yet the market is still remaining supported and crude prices keep going higher. So I think the market's fairly comfortable with the fact that US production is coming back online at a fairly rapid pace, is going to continue going up. And I think just the overall geopolitics at play at the moment is helping keep this oil price supported. So I'm, I'm not really expecting too much out of the data uh, when we get the DOEs later. Uh, but as a reference point, we had crude build of 4.845 million. This was obviously quite bearish because expectations were for a drawdown of 1.75 million. Cushing build 62,000. Gasoline was a drawdown though. It's obviously counterintuitive. Uh, that would be more bullish. Draw of 3.369 million. Distillates was a draw of 768,000. The point being here that the market although moved lower in the initial reaction, quickly recovered overnight, um, and we remain at 71. We'll review this again, obviously, closer towards the time of the data coming out this afternoon. Looking at the calendar, um, we have coming up, this morning is actually relatively quiet. The main feature of the morning is Eurozone CPI, but you, you need to factor in that this is final readings, uh, and so, Usually this means they're non-market moving uh, because it's just final revisions. Uh, but nonetheless, that's coming out at 10. Going into the US afternoon, a little bit more busy. Uh, a couple of things of interest. Housing data, again, lesser significance, I'd say, in terms of uh, a focus for, for traders given um, direction or attention from the, from the monetary policy committee members of the Fed is elsewhere, not on the housing market, but that data is coming out at 1.30. Probably more so keeping an eye on industrial production, 2.15, crude oil infantry numbers as per usual at 3.30. Um, speakers though, is, it is pretty busy again, and you do have the ECB president speaking. And just given some of the recent um, political developments in Italy, I would probably be monitoring uh, Draghi with some interest in case he does make any kind of doorstep comments, Q&A type press uh, answers in toward what does he think and what does the ECB feel about the developments and particularly this request to kind of write off large sums of money uh, that are being rumoured from last night. So Draghi speaks at 1pm, speaking at an ECB conference. Uh, this is supposed to be about the departure of VP uh, Victor Constancio. Um, so it shouldn't be on anything economy or policy related but just given obviously the nature of the context at the moment on Italy uh, I think definitely worth keeping half an ear on otherwise you've got Bostic who's a voter from the Fed who is discussing the economy so this is definitely going to be one to watch as well at 1.30 um, and then we've got Fed's Bullard but that's not until much later on in the afternoon okay that's it from me hand you over to Sam and I wish you a good day thanks guys Hi guys, good morning. Uh, let's have a quick look over the charts from today. Starting with the S&P, just before we go over to the currencies that has just popped out uh, of its high of the day. As you can see here, let's put this onto a, a 15 minute chart. We had a, a decent resistance uh, point from this morning and late last night. Just broken through there, obviously you've got the pivot just in, in the way, so not necessarily saying this is going to be the, the start of a, a push higher as we look to, to eat away at yesterday's sort of down move. You've got some key resistance points from uh, the back end of, of the sort of European session in the way just above the pivot. If that was to go, yesterday morning's low looks like the, the key sort of resistance potential point from, uh, from yesterday and, and then potentially for today if we were to, to get there. You could see that move where everything started to come down yesterday. Would I expect the same today? Not so sure would be a case of just sort of waiting to see how that sort of pans out. You've got this trend line going on from the high that we had on Monday and Tuesday and we're almost coming into that sort of area now. So I'd expect some resistance around this point in the pivot just because we've ticked by the pivot wouldn't make me want to necessarily look to, to go long there at all. Have a quick look over the Nasdaq and Dow just to see if that correlation you can see while the Nasdaq has pushed through the similar area you've got the, the pivot 
just acting as resistance there. Dow Jones not as aggressively pushed higher, but found resistance on, on the back end of, uh, of yesterday's session, sort of higher point, and you still got the pivot just a bit above. So just be careful if looking to, to go long. I think you would prefer to see a further push up, confirm break higher, to really sort of want to go with this. Uh, looking over at the currencies, so this morning we've just started to see a, a bit of dollar weakness, if you like, a bit of profit taking, you know, nothing, nothing too much, just sideways price action, albeit just a tiny bit to the upside. Still favouring, I think, the downside here. Um, where we've sort of found a high for the day, we had some half-decent resistance <coughs> around there yesterday, pivot and previous highs, and then the low of, of yesterday uh, afternoon before we broke down could be some other good resistance points to, to continue this move lower. It wouldn't surprise me too much at all if actually this, this sort of high from the day now was to be the high uh, for definitely the morning anyway. Pound a bit more choppy. You can see we did push, push on and above the pivot. I'd almost disregard that now uh, where we found, again, similar to to the euro, what was the morning low, then became the afternoon highs, and we just found resistance upon that point now. I'll be, be looking for, again, this direction to be to the downside, worth just having a couple of these trend lines on, Ooh, to see how they've been, how they're reacting, one second. We've had a bit of a break there in the pound, not the greatest trend line, to be honest, uh, but looking for a break low if we want to come back higher, I think a break of these lows and then you've got a decent target in what could be quite a good support level around yesterday's low and the S1. Of course, these lows we've, uh, we're sort of trading at yesterday was the lowest we've been for quite some time, uh, but uh, definitely favouring the downside for now in, in the pound and, and the euro as well, but ideally uh, just be a bit careful uh, just in case the, the dollar does start to see a bit of weakness having a decent push to the upside, obviously near enough the, the highest of the year yesterday, the dollar index, albeit uh, for one other day. Aussie dollar, decent double bottom this morning, so I'll be keeping an eye on, on that level later on if we can come back to it. We had some good support back on the ninth from that area as well. Just pushing above the pivot, uh, just finding a bit of resistance. I think the key level to, to the upside today, so similar with the S&P, it, it's a bit higher up. You've got the lows of the morning and then the highs of the afternoon, similar with the currencies in that respect as well. Uh, but just a bit higher, around that sort of 7500 for the Aussie dollar. If we can push there, I would expect some decent resistance uh, to, to sort of come into play. Not the worst trade as well, to perhaps look to go short, is the R1 and the early morning highs as well. Not necessarily confident we would get to that point, but definitely would be looking to go short if we were. Uh, but I think the 7500 could be a, a decent opportunity there as well. As mentioned by a couple of people in the chat, dollar yen just came to the pivot point, the 200 day moving average sort of acting as a support for now. Previous lows of yesterday evening and this morning could potentially be a resistance area as well. So something just to bear in mind for the, the dollar yen directional bias, I think should still be to the upside. If you can get a bit lower down, fantastic, as we did obviously break through that triple top yesterday uh, that could be the real sort of trade opportunity later on if we were to, to come back and test this sort of area that you see here just be careful I think though for the, for the dollar pairs for now obviously what we saw yesterday morning was sideways price action and then the dollar really started to strengthen and that's also what you saw on on Monday as well so just bear that in mind uh, although very rare that you do get uh, two days in a row like yesterday so just something to, to bear in mind going forward there. Uh, having a look over at oil, which obviously came down very sharply from that uh, multi-year high, albeit very briefly by what may be a couple of ticks or so, came down as everything sort of, well, sort of came late to the party, if you like. Overall directional bias for, for the oil, I think we'll have to wait until half three to, to see what can happen there. Worth being aware of the, the sort of the key support that we had following the, the API last night and I think the top of that range really being 
there you go, the higher point that we had just before that release came out. We'll be looking to probably play the range, favouring the, the upside as I think, but really looking at the last sort of six, seven trading days, again you can see this market sort of going sideways. One thing just to bear in mind for now though, you've got gasoline just coming to its uh, lower point following that API, just testing that now. So if we were to get you know, a, a proper break of that, it might well be that oil looks to have a, another test near, near its sort of lower levels of the morning, just currently trading at, at $71. Gold, big break of that, uh, that 1300 not too far away f uh, from that to the upside, was also the initial sort of low we had before breaking through, so I'd be keeping an eye on that if we were to get there, as well as the, the sort of the strength or weakness of the dollar. With, with markets like this that sort of have that slow grind higher after a down move, always worth just having a bit of a trend line that you can see, there you go, matched up using the lows, let me just circle those up for you, and it might be the safer option here rather than looking to short if we do go higher up, because obviously it's, it's unlikely to get two days in a row uh, so similar, that you're looking for a continuation and maybe a break of this trend line is, uh, is the way to go there, and then you've already got your, your sort of targets in mind using these lows of the mornings and then yesterday as well. Not a bad little option to, to bear in mind there. FTSE, bullish open, pushing higher, bit of resistance from yesterday. Uh, not really as interested at all was the was the FTSE when equities were coming down there. So still h higher levels that we've seen for quite some time. Keep an eye on yesterday's high, not far away from the R1 level uh, from today. DAX, very messy yesterday uh, and still elevated uh, near yesterday's highs, albeit three days in a row we've we failed to make a new high. So there's something to bear in mind at this level that we're trading now. If we can push on, it might see a, a bit of a push, but for now, holding quite firm. Uh, keep an eye on equities. NASDAQ still holding at the pivot. S&P just come down from the pivot and Dow Jones obviously failed to, to make a test of that level uh, right now. Dollar index sideways. Uh, we're keeping an eye on these levels mentioned. Wouldn't be surprising if they were the highs for now in euro and pound. Aussie dollar just pushing on perhaps a bit more than the others. And the dollar in uh, Aussie dollar, not Aussie dollar, dollar yen as well. Keeping an eye on that triple top from yesterday. Could that be a potential support point going forward? Any questions as usual, please please do let me know or, or, or let me or I know in the chat as well. If not, have a, a good trading day.